All right, this morning on The Dish, New Orleans has long been known for fantastic food. And perhaps no name is more associated with that tradition than Brennan's. The third generation of the Brennan family is now in the restaurant business with a variety of venues. But there's a special affection for the place where it all began, the original Brennan's, which after some difficult times is now safely back in the family fold. Jamie Wax has the story. It's hard to say what's more iconic in the restaurant world. The familiar pink building on Royal Street in the French Quarter of New Orleans, or the name Brennan's mounted on it in brass script. My family took over in 1955 for their one year of renovation. Either way, the very first of the now dozens of restaurants owned by members of the storied Brennan family has been a fine dining landmark for nearly seven decades. And it's famously pink. It's like famously pink. You know pink. exactly where you are when you're in front of Brennan's. You, you absolutely know exactly where you are. It's always been pink. The family member currently in charge of Brennan's is Ralph Brennan, whose memories of the restaurant go back to his childhood. When I was a child, I mean very young child, I used to come with my father and mother here to eat. But in high school, you got hired by your aunt, the legendary Ella Brennan. Yes. One of the, the grand dames of all restaurateurs all over the world. Yes, exactly. She had a plan for me, and uh, I started in the kitchen as a prep cook, peeling shrimp and boning chicken. And I did that for about a month, and after that, she said, you're ready to be promoted, and they put me on the line. But as with many family businesses, disputes over how to run the restaurant led to a deep and bitter rift. It was a very difficult time, culminated in 74. The family had a disagreement. They decided to split the company up. They couldn't reconcile. And it turned out to be 40 years. You know, over that time, there was very little communication between the families. And it was very difficult because we were all close. We'd all been raised together. We'll go through the doors here and into the carriageway. Then in 2013, the family's namesake restaurant came back into Ralph Brennan's life. Then when I saw that it was gonna go into bankruptcy, I figured, I don't want to see it go outside the family. And that's why I got involved in it. It would have been devastating for someone else to take it because so much of my family is invested in this restaurant. This is the namesake and I didn't want to see it leave. And so I took on the, you know, the challenge with a partner and it took us about 16 months. A year later, when every last detail was finally up to his standards, hey! Brennan extended an invitation to the family including a special guest who hadn't set foot in the place in 40 years. To your memories are better, the car pulls up and in walks Ella Brennan again for the first time in 40 years. Tell me about that night. It was very emotional uh, for her. She came in, she was on a walker, and she took her time. She went all around. And then she told me she was very happy. And then, as I said, she sat with the children. And it was special. She never came back. But it was a special night, just to have all the family together with the kids. Like his Aunt Ella, Brennan has a reputation for spotting and keeping talent. Good morning, Mr. Morning. How are you? From longtime employees like executive kitchen manager Titus Perkins. You have to love what you do. And I love what I do. I work for a great company. So for me, it's a no-brain. To new hires, like executive chef Ryan Hacker. Could you poach eggs in your sleep? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Though they've stepped up their dinner menu, Brennan's continues to be known for sumptuous, boozy, celebratory daytime feasting. Just don't call it brunch. This is a really opulent spread. And it's just breakfast. It's just breakfast. This is our brioche French toast with a strawberry sauce. Over there you have one of our most famous dishes and actually our number one selling dish, our egg sousard. This is a pastrami hash, one of our new dishes, which is made with homemade pastrami, a poached egg, and a chive hollandaise sauce. Egg St. Charles, one of the older dishes here that we've updated a little bit. The dish here is egg sardou, one of our oldest dishes. It's on a cream spinach, fried artichoke heart, poached egg, and a sauce Sharon, which has a little bit of tomato flavor in it. Throughout all the years of this place and all the changes that have happened, you do not call this brunch. It's breakfast, exactly. And it has been breakfast for, for over the 75-year period. And what would the ultimate breakfast be without flawlessly cooked eggs? 
The beauty of a Brennan's poached egg is that it is perfect and consistent. My egg looks just like yours. It's exactly how you want it to be. Are there secrets? I, I can't poach eggs like this at home. The secret to this business is just incredible attention to detail. It's executing it every day for every guest. No meal this decadent would be complete without dessert, including the most famous dish of all here, Bananas Foster, a Brennan's original and a personal favorite. And I have been banned from cooking it at home because I've almost <laughs> set three kitchens in three cities on fire. <laughs> Corporate executive chef Haley Bitterman gave me a crash course in preparing it. You want it on pretty high. Okay. okay. Their most popular dessert dates back to a challenge in the 1950s from Ralph's uncle Owen Brennan. And you've got this nice hot pan. Okay. And you're going to add the dark rum, right? Uh, am I? Okay. This is what? See that? Wow. Ford the flank. For Ralph Brennan, preserving traditions like Bananas Foster is about more than business. It's about family. What do you think, Ralph? Do you see yourself in 40 years coming in on your own walker and, <laughs> and seeing all your children running this place? Well, I hope I'm here in 40 years. Uh, but yes, I, I hope to. Cheers. It's breakfast. Let the tradition continue. I love it. Let the tradition continue. And I will also say that across the board, people who work for Ralph Brennan told me about how much he has done for his employees and their families during the pandemic. Don't, Guys? Don't you love the straight face he has knowing how, <laughs> how upset we are that there's an empty table here? I, I will say that that is great. We love hearing it. And it's great seeing that this has stayed in the family and all that you did. But, Jamie, you're back with us. Uh, you're You've right. been in New Orleans. <laughs> celebratory, boozy daytime eating. Yeah. And there's nothing here. I know. Nothing. This is our favorite thing to do together. It's been a long time. I'm sorry. Just, just, just stay over there. Uh, Jessica and Marcy, uh, all three of you, you all dropped the ball on this one. That, dropped the ball. That moment with uh, Aunt Ella was oh, so that sweet. Was. It's, it was it's really a really tight-knit nice. family, and they've had some risks, but there's been a lot of healing. And... They are just, they are the most hospitable yes, uh, host for the restaurant industry. They and are. you didn't burn yourself making the bananas foster. This time I did. I still have my eyebrows. <laughs> Good Love stuff, it. Jamie. Good stuff, Jamie.